What's this? A honey-do list. I figure you can grab that stuff for that chow. Oh, thank you, gifts. Well, Philip and Alan for allowing us to stay at the Spalding Mansion. And Lorelei, I'm impressed. How very Beth-like of you. Yes, but I think we can get to this later. Matter of fact, we should do it together. Reinforce Beth's tastes in you. Oh, come on, Eddie. I mean, you hate this place. And I want to get back to the house just as soon as I can. If you go pick those things up, will I chow and kill two birds with one stone? All right, all right. Your humble servant is on his way. Uh, Eddie? Mm -hmm. Why are you always going to use the front door? Car's parked right by the back door. It's all right. Five, four, three, two. Hey, <laughs> this is a nice surprise. Actually, not. I figured you might need this. Where did you find that? In the kitchen. You left it there. I was looking every... Uh, wait a minute. How did you know I was going to be here? Well, I turned it on and saw that you had an appointment at this time, so I figured I'd drop it by and see if you had a free moment. I hope you don't mind. Oh. Uh, of course I don't mind. No, that was very sweet of you to do this, but you didn't have to bring this all the way down here. Oh, no, it's no, no trouble. Well, I actually think my appointment is late, so, yeah. Where is the ubiquitous Edmund? Lurking in the back somewhere? He's, uh, running an errand. Oh, good. How fortunate. Mm. Oh, Beth. You know I love you, and I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm still just so grateful that you're alive, but I can't tell you how disturbing I find it that you would even give him the time of day, much less let him back into your life. Philip, now, you know we've been down this road before, and I know that you think that Edmund went down to Mexico to rob me blind, and I don't know how many ways I can say this, but you're wrong. Edmund adores me. He has no interest in the money that Bradley left me. That's because there's no money to be interested in. Well, yes, there is. I mean, we, we talked about it yesterday, the, the bequest Bradley left me. Yeah, the bequest. It's the deed to a silver mine in Colorado. Oh, right. Well, I'd forgotten what it was. You know, I find it really hard to believe that you would forget that. Well, it's hard for you to understand. I imagine what it's like for me. It's so, so frustrating because I just, I keep forgetting things and big things all the time. I, yeah, I know. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I understand. I'm sure it's very, very difficult for you. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to help you get through this. You are? I am. And you know what? Actually, actually, it's okay. The, the memory lapses help to explain some of the other lapses in judgment. Uh, because, you know, you, you, you may not know this, Beth, but you being back with Edmund makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And I, I know what you're going to say. I know you're going to say it's your life. And you're right. It is your life. And with everything else that you've had dumped on you recently, I'm sure the last thing that you want to hear is my somewhat biased opinion. So but the fact of the matter is that I am stumped. I am, I am, I am just baffled by all of this because you were determined before you went down to Mexico to divorce Edmund. And you are yet to give me one good reason as to what changed. Why you would turn on a dime and go back to someone who had treated you so despicably. Well, Philip, there are a lot of ways to look at things. And you have your point of view, and I have mine. No, but see, that doesn't cut it, Beth, because practically everybody shares my opinion of Edmund, while virtually no one shares yours. Look, I, I don't understand this. I, I know that you have forgotten some things, and I know that you're still a little off balance, but, I mean, come on. Do, do I have to jot you down a list of all his crimes against humanity in general and you in particular? 
Well, yeah, Philip. Maybe you should. 